Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Carolina Weather Authority's meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg, and I hope you all had a wonderful week and have a great weekend planned. Um, we've got more to talk about in the tropics. I guess if you've been watching the last week or two, this shouldn't be any big shock to anybody. Um, but if you don't want to miss out on what the latest thinking is, if you have any kind of tropical um, concerns, then feel free to subscribe and show your support, and that way you can get more frequent updates. And if we go live, you'll have that as well. Uh, we've got a Facebook uh, page, Carolina Weather Authority. It talks more about what's going on in the Carolinas, but the tropics are obviously something that seem to find their way into our region one way or not. I mean, what have we had, about nine or ten storms that have hit the U.S., and most of them have brought moisture into the Carolinas with severe weather, and we may not be done with that yet. Um, and here's what we're talking about on carolinawxauthority.com. Mike has a, a, an article that was issued early this week and uh, talks about the potential rain, range of what a storm track would be coming from a gyre based on pretty much where the uh, jet stream is positioned and where our high pressure systems are. This time of the year, typically jet stream energy comes across the southern U.S. It starts to drop down and protects the western gulf and sends systems more north and northeastward towards or away from the east coast. Now, it doesn't mean the Gulf of Mexico couldn't be seeing another system here. It's This year especially has been pretty crazy with, um, what, five, six storms um, affecting Louisiana and areas just to the east and west. I mean, the year 2020, while it's had a lot of storms, um, it has not been a record breaker as far as um, the all the energy that it accumulates from each of these storms. That was in 2005. But we've had uh, some storms affecting the same areas over and over again. It's been like Cobra Kai just showing no mercy here. So it's going to get interesting, unfortunately, once again. This was the um, graphic that I produced for you guys over 10 days ago showing when our next storm could develop. And the models um, at that time showed more favorable conditions with less of a steer to the north until after the 24th. Well, what's happened is the wind shear has been a little too hostile, so nothing has gotten going, but now it looks like finally on the uh, tail end of this, we're seeing something form. Uh, but the upper level patterns look a little bit different than they did about 10 days ago. And if anybody knows how the weather works, you'll know, of course, that our models can be pretty much complete junk after 10 days from now. They show you an idea of what could happen, but they are definitely not going to pin down exact tracks and intensity. So you're going to see wild swings from one model to the other. Now that we have a system that's on the verge of developing in this region, uh, we should see a little more consistency and something that we can go off of. Uh, but I'm a meteorologist. I'm not a modelologist. I will show you the models because I think that's helpful sometimes, but it's not something I would put 100% of my faith and weight into. Just uh, ideas are there, and then all we have to do is just show you how they start coming together. So that was the first graphic. Then we had um, in a video further on, I think this was uh, produced over the end of last week, um, we showed epsilon forming. It came out of a cold core system, got a little bit hybrid, and then sat in an area of low wind shear, and then within three days was a major hurricane. So if something like that can happen here over cooler water, just imagine what could happen here over warmer water, even in the end of October. And behind Zeta, um, we're talking about potentially more storms that could form in here based on an active Madden Julian oscillation phase based on the fact that we're in a full-blown La Nina and that surface water temperatures are warmer than they typically are, which they have been pretty much all year. Uh, but because of La Nina, we now have that, um, that potential uh, ingredient that adds to more storms than usual kind of magnified, if that makes sense to everybody. So I could talk about it all day with you. I won't because we don't have all day. Uh, but this is still looking like Zeta here in the next couple of days. Um, the track's probably going to be more likely into here than out to sea or back into Mexico. But again, until it forms, we can't say that for sure. Now, my current graphic that you'll see out there shows us that we now are finally seeing in the last 12 hours something beginning to consolidate. And what could happen is over these warm waters, um, as much as a forecast model will try to show it's um, developing into a named storm, it's not going to capture, in my opinion, what uh, would be potentially a significant amount of intensification because of what we're seeing aloft. And that could be uh, what leads to maybe a hurricane threat in this area in red here. Of course, by the time it gets up here, it's, it's a weakening system. But uh, no matter what we're looking at, by the middle of next week, I would not be shocked if Florida were under a hurricane warning. I would not be shocked if the Carolinas, Georgia, were dealing with flooding rains and severe weather based on what we're seeing. And oh, by the way, if you're in Louisiana, Mississippi, don't, don't write it off just yet. Same goes for the Yucatan. Same goes for the Bahamas. Uh, but the area in red, I think, right now, from what I'm seeing, has at least the greatest chance of seeing a potential hurricane. Will it work out that way? I mean, we're not God. We don't know for sure. 
Um, but he saw how quickly Epsilon got ramped up in just two days, and with warmer water down in here, it's not going to take a whole lot. Maybe somebody sneezes a little bit too much, if that makes sense. All right, so to be more serious, here's the list of storms. I made the colors a little easier to see. And uh, you can see the storms in red were our major hurricanes. The last two storms have become major hurricanes. Delta, of course, um, was a crushing blow on the Yucatan and Louisiana. Epsilon kind of broad brushed Bermuda. It looked like maybe it was going to get closer. And then the models shifted to the right as the high pressure region west of Bermuda was stronger. And uh, as, as a result, we have a fish storm out of Epsilon. Uh, Laura, of course, was the most damaging storm of the year. Teddy was potentially a threat to Bermuda, but ended up going towards uh, Nova Scotia and weakening. Uh, but of course, we've had damage from storms like Sally, which produced a lot of flooding across Alabama, Florida, and Georgia. Isa Eos, which produced problems in the Carolinas and then into the northeast as it strengthened with the jet stream and zipped northward. Um, and then we had systems like Paulette, which were pretty intense. Hannah, which hammered Texas. Um, we also had, you know, Vicky, um, which was really not a big deal, but Gamma um, was more of a deal for the Yucatan because the Yucatan had two storms in a row. And Beta, which caused flooding in parts of Houston. So we've had a lot of storms. Um, not all of them have been all that intense, but here's the list, and here are the letters that we're looking at in Greek that could be used up in the next month. I would not be shocked if we got past Theta to Iota and Kappa by December. So we'll look at that more as the days go on. Here's the ocean analysis. You can see there's still quite a bit of potential for any system once it gets going to uh, feed off of these warm, deep waters. And the thing I do want to show you is that Epsilon um, is, is right on the very fringe of where the heat potential is and still found a way to become a Category 3 hurricane over the marginal blue area of 6 kilojoules per squared centimeter of tropical cyclone heat potential. What does that value mean? Honestly, between you and me, I have no clue, nor do I care, but it's a good number to gauge how deep these warm waters are and how they can produce fuel. But anywhere in the Caribbean is still um, prime real estate, and of course in the southwest Atlantic, even the Florida Gulf Coast, all the way up to the Panhandle, we still can support um, pretty intense storm, even here at the end of October, especially this year. All right, so here are our two storms. Epsilon, I won't waste much time talking about. It's now moving north and away from Bermuda. We'll be in the open waters and weakening gradually, but um, deepening as it merges with another system into a powerful cyclone may affect Iceland and Scotland and the uh, Faroe Islands. Uh, it says Falkland on the other video. I apologize, it's Faroe. Um, and then our system here, which is now colored red, it was just a, a barely a yellow little piece of snot yesterday. Now it's a big red, soon to be potential tropical depression or storm. We think that'll be the case. And the other thing I'll point out is that a couple of outlooks ago, um, the Hurricane Center had the system going this direction. Now it is showing uh, the direction that we just don't want to see in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and that's into the southern Gulf, potentially. Um, so 70% chance it develops. In my opinion, it will probably by Sunday morning, so we'll have to take a look at that. Here are the water temperatures, where it's going, still quite warm up into here, and then they cool off as we get towards a panhandle in the north central Gulf Coast. But notice just about all the Atlantic still above average water-wise for this time of the year. So let's just pretend it's September and not October based on the um, surface temperatures of the ocean, because that's kind of what we're looking at here. Um, the only areas that are cooler are where Epsilon churned up a lot of water and where Delta churned up some water a couple weeks ago. That's really it. So here's our satellite image. This is uh, Epsilon. Here's Bermuda. So it's now pulling away. The tropical storm conditions have ended on the uh, eastern part of Bermuda. It will go over open waters. Uh, here are two waves we're going to watch in November when they come into the Caribbean behind the gyre that's going to produce, I think, potential zeta here. Uh, we've got a powerful front coming down. We've had snow across the upper Midwest. Another system behind it will produce snow in Colorado and all the way down into North Texas. So by uh, next Tuesday, we could be talking about a snow and ice storm in the southern plains and a hurricane, or a tropical storm or hurricane threatening the northern or northeastern Gulf of Mexico states. Uh, pretty crazy stuff, but it is October, and that's what can happen. All right, so Invest 95L, I'm waiting on the newest model runs to come in as far as spaghetti plots. We don't see a lot yet. Uh, you see the system likely is going to turn is going to be moving west away from the Caymans and then maybe turning back toward Cuba temporarily. Um, most of the glo global models show maybe somewhere up in here. There's still um, the eastern part of the system could develop. It comes up near South Florida or goes out to sea. There's a few that show it weaker and into the central Gulf. I'm not even going with that just yet. If you're in Louisiana, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a lot of weight into it. But here's our satellite imagery. You can see why the model hasn't quite figured out what's going on. Because you've got one area of very well concentrated weather near Grand Cayman Island right here. 
and another area trying to get going, making Jamaica wet. So, um, and Jamaica's had a ton of rain, by the way. I know it's not been pleasant, and that's heading up into Cuba as well. So I think, for the most part, we're going to see this area develop in here, which is what the gyre kind of has been showing. And the models that are showing this area developing and taking over are going to end up being wrong, and the models that show this area taking over are going to end up being right. We have a couple days before we'll know that for certain. The reason why is the wind shear is lower over here than it is over here. So something that forms here, those cloud tops are going to get sheared northeastward. A strong jet stream across the northern gulf will take care of anything that comes up this way. But a couple days ago, we had reds over this area, which are um, high wind shear, unfavorable for intensification. Now we're seeing the area green that was down here shifting north with our system. And that's why it's had a chance to kind of expand its reach and grow into a more organized system. Uh, we'll take a look here at the ensemble forecast plots, and most of them going into the north central gulf. Um, some, of course, farther east, some farther west. Again, we're going to see that kind of discrepancy probably for a couple more days. Uh, the European, uh, not as gung-ho, shockingly, right? Um, but does uh, have several solutions coming into the southern gulf with a few going off to the northeast. Um, and then, oh, by the way, here are the next two behind it. Here's one in here, and here's two in here. So maybe uh, we're talking about eta and theta. Uh, crazy stuff. Here is the GFS from uh, this uh, late morning run showing a weaker system coming by Key West and coming up the panhandle as a tropical storm on Wednesday evening and then merging with our system and moving offshore Thursday into Friday. Uh, but the ICON model, which does a better job, in my opinion, once we get to a developing storm, shows uh, something uh, produced into a tropical storm here by Monday of next week, moving close to the western tip of Cuba and developing into a hurricane. Uh, by Tuesday and Wednesday, aimed right at, looks like, destined to Panama City, Florida. Uh, I'm going to talk about Michael, because there are some similarities here. It's Hurricane Michael. I know it's a dirty word in, in a lot of people's homes right now, but uh, the upper-level pattern right now shows a strong heat ridge, a high pressure, over uh, the northeastern U.S. and Atlantic Canada. Uh, it shows a trough digging down with two pieces, one down here and then a bigger piece, of course, bringing that cold air into the northern plains, bringing winter in early. Um, what happens is over the next couple of days, that trough intensifies and cuts off into the Four Corners region. That's why I think we'll have a winter storm in North Texas and in Oklahoma by Monday and Tuesday. And, of course, that expands northward. But uh, it takes this high, kind of suppresses it, but pushes it back to the west. Uh, where a tropical system could go maybe would be in here on the periphery of this ridge. So we'll have to see how strong this ridge ends up being. If it weakens as much as this, then it's probably going to go east of Louisiana. But if this cutoff is a little slower and the ridge is farther west, then we may have to shift our forecast even more to the west, which we've seen a few times this year. hate to say that if you're in Louisiana, but you need to at least be watching this at this point. And then finally, the uh, cutoff takes the system northward and it accelerates off with this trough um, by the end of next week, before Halloween. Um, what I do want to show you, though, is uh, this is the upper-level pattern from Michael a couple years ago with the big ridge centered near the Carolinas. Of course, ours is here, but it's going to kind of get suppressed. Cut off low in the Four Corners region, and then uh, that cutoff low opening up into a strong trough. Here was Michael. Here's the ridge still holding strong. So we've seen this pattern before. Finally, this trough cuts into two pieces with the with the main upper low near the vortex in Ontario and another piece in California. But here was Michael up here getting brought up into the trough that pushed into the uh, southern plains, produced severe weather back in here. And, uh, you know, this pattern has been seen before. So the only difference this go-around is that the uh, waters are a bit cooler than they were with Michael. So I don't think we'll have a Category 5. I really, I hope I hope not, but, you know, it is 2020. Here's the upper-level pattern, which shows the amount of wind shear in the northern gulf this weekend does uh, eventually get lifted out by this trough here. And uh, we've got an anticyclone producing some lower wind shear all across this region of the gulf. The only thing we'll have to watch for is how much dry air can get entrained into the western side of the storm. But, um, you know, things are definitely favorable for intensification with the right amount of circulation in the right spot. And then eventually here's our uh, trough, which would pick up a system and push it along this uh, periphery of the ridge, right into the Carolinas, where we really don't need any more rain. Uh, the upper level pattern shows uh, all this moisture um, coming up into the central gulf. Again, the GFS doesn't quite understand necessarily that there's a developed storm, and it may, it may be right. Um, but it shows here's the next one behind it and the one behind it after that. Um, well, what I will show you is that the GFS has quite a bit of rain no matter what happens. If this develops or not, we could see two to four inches of rain, maybe locally higher amounts in the central Gulf Coast states and in southeast Florida. 
whereas the icon is showing a more organized system, so we've got a lot more heavy rain potentially coming up this way. Uh, but we could have very heavy rain, more severe weather in the Carolinas late Wednesday night into Thursday if this system organizes into a tropical system. So we'll have more on that in the coming days, but again, I will show you our area of red. That's where we should start at least being more vigilant. The area in yellow should not let their guard down at this point, uh, as we could have potentially a Hurricane Zeta by uh, Monday or Tuesday of next week. We'll, of course, know more in the coming days. All right, folks, thanks for joining me, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest. Have a great and safe weekend, and God bless.